Is that starter question, is that pretty easy? Okay, what, what makes it easy? Okay, it's already in vertex form, so that makes it pretty easy. Okay, and you, you know the shape, right? We, we've studied that to death. The vertex is going to be at? Negative 1, 8. So we're going to go back 1 and up 8. So we're going to put a vertex right there. So that would be negative 1, 8. Here's our axis of symmetry. If I were to draw that in there very lightly, there's our axis of symmetry. Okay. Um, what does the negative 2 tell us? Okay, it's upside down and vertically stretched. So it tells us that the negative tells us that it opens down and it's been vertically stretched. So if I were to go over one unit, which if I think about that, if I go over one unit, that's going to put me where? Right on the y-axis, right? So I'd normally go over one and down one squared. I'm going to go over one and down. Okay, so I'm going to go down twice as far. So I'm right there. If I went over 2, I'd normally go down 2 squared. That would be 4. I'm going to go down twice as far. Now, what's cool about this? If I go over 2, that puts me at an x-coordinate of 1. And if I go down 8, where am I? Zero. Okay, I'm at 0. I'm right on the x-axis. Okay, So we can graph everything we need on this one. All the typical points that we graph, x-intercepts and y-intercepts just because of the particular shape. So there's the vertex. I'm going to label this one as 0, 6. This one is 1, 0. And this one right here, negative 3, 0. Now, what I want you to notice is that these are equally spaced around the axis of symmetry. So here's the axis of symmetry of negative 1. So if I go two units this way, I get to 1. If I go two units that way, I get to negative 1. So there's all that symmetry that we talked about before. Any questions there? Okay. So we're really familiar with the fact that if we take a function and we graph it, it makes a specific shape. So we did all those parent graphs. We talked about what those shapes were, and then we talked about transformations of those shapes. Okay. So we've studied linear functions like this, y equals mx plus b. That graph is, of course, a line. That's why we call it a linear. Whoops. That's why we call it a linear function. And what is this doing? I must have typed that. There we go. Got rid of that. Okay, we've also studied quadratics. If we see a shape or a function like this, what shape does it make? It makes a parabola. Okay. So we're really familiar with stuff like that. Parabola. Okay. And this section, we introduced these in Math 1010, and we're going to study them a little bit more in depth. We're going to talk about exponential functions. Um, exponential functions are of this form. This would be like the parent graph of an exponential function. So f of x equals a to the x. Um, and it's, it's a little bit different than the functions that we've used in the past. And what I want to do to point this out and to talk about the behavior of this function is I've got three different functions right here. Every one of them has a 2 and an x in it. Okay. If I take x and all I do is I multiply it by 2, what shape do I get? I get a line. Okay. So this is going to make a line. Okay. That's a linear equation. If I plug in a number, all I do every single time is I just double the number. So if I plug in a 2, I get a 4. If I plug in an 8, I get a 16. Okay. If I plug a number in here, what do I do with it? You square it. You don't multiply it by 2, you square it. Okay? This is a power function. Okay? In this particular case, it happens to make a parabola. right? Okay, now, this is different. It has the same numbers in it, the same number and same variable. So here we plug in a number. All we do is double it. Here we plug in a number, and we square it. So think about what happened here when I plugged in an 8. If I plug in an 8, I double it, I get 16. If I plug in an 8 here, I square it, I get 64. Okay? When I plug a number in here, it's the exponent, so I take the base and raise it to that power. So this is an exponential. And think about this number that we've plugged into each one so far. We plugged an 8 into the linear function, it doubled it, we got 16. We plug an 8 into the squaring function, the power function, we get 64. What happens when you plug an 8 in here? 
you get 2 to the 8th. And 2 to the 8th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Anybody know what it is? It's 256. Okay? So timesing by 2 makes it bigger, but not that much bigger. Squaring it makes it bigger, quite a bit bigger, but not nearly as big as what we get when we have an exponential function, and we use that as the exponent. Okay? So it continues to grow and grow and grow. Okay? Just like this one does. Only that one grows faster, okay? So we get a drastically different shape if we're dealing with an exponential as opposed to a power function or a linear function. So um, this should look really familiar. We're going to buzz through this as quick as we can. We're going to use an XY table just to make sure everybody's on the same page when we graph this exponential. This exponential is called exponential base 3. This is exponential base 3. And we're going to use that XY table and we're going to come up with a couple points. So the easiest one to plug in would be to plug in a zero. So if I take three and raise it to a zero, what do I get? Any number to the zero power is one. Okay. If I take three and raise it to the first, what do I get? I get three. And if I take three and raise it to the negative one, what does the negative in the exponent mean? Okay. So the negative means reciprocal. So that's going to be one over three to the first. So that's going to be one third is my answer there. Now, if I were to put a two in here, put it right there, three to the second, three squared is nine. And if I plug in a negative two, I get one ninth. Very good. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I, I just want you to take a look at the behavior, how this is growing. Okay. Because all exponentials display this type of behavior. Okay. And let's start off right here. How do I go from this y value to this y value? How do I go from 1 to 3? If you say add 2, yeah, that's one way to do it, but then it should be consistent. Do I add 2 to get from 3 to 9? Nope. What I'm doing here is I times by 3. So if I take 1 and times it by 3, I get 3. Times it by 3 again, I get 9. Times it by 3, the next one would be 27 and so forth. Let's back up just a little bit. If I take 1 ninth, What's one ninth times three? One third. What's one third times three? That's one. One times three is three. Three times three is nine, and so forth. So every time we increase the value of x by one, the y value gets three times bigger than it used to be. Okay? Does that make sense? And we could graph this really quickly. Now, one ninth is really tough to graph. One third is a little bit easier. Okay? Zero, one, and then this is one, three. And look how quickly this grows. Okay, 9 would be way up here, so it's going to look something like this. So this is an exponential graph. It comes out here, and you'll notice that the base of an exponential, you'll recall, has to be a positive number that's not equal to 1. So if I'm taking a positive number and raising it to a power, am I ever going to get 0? Am I ever going to get a negative? Nope. So this comes out here, and I've got a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Okay, and if I label those three points, and you'll remember from 10, uh, 10, 10, these three points are important. Can anybody tell me why? Who, who said that? Thank you very much. Christopher's going to raise his head to tell us that. Okay, it's where the bend happened. It's where the biggest part of the curve happens. Okay, so that's why we want to graph those. Okay, now I'm hoping that we can do this um, just from memory. And we're only going to need three points here. Those three points are always, for these um, parent functions, we haven't transformed these at all. This is going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. This is always a 1. This is the same as the base. And this is 1 over the base, the reciprocal of the base, because the negative in the exponent means reciprocal. We doing OK? OK, so this goes through 1 half goes through 1 and goes through 2. So it looks like this. So this point would be 1, 2, 0, 1, negative 1, 1 half. So I've got everything labeled there, all those points. Should I label anything else just to make sure it's convincing? Horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. OK? Let's do this next one. Now, you'll notice that this one is a little bit different. This has a base that's a fraction. We can still deal with that. So here are x and our y values. It doesn't change this at all. This is still going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. 
If I plug in a zero, does it matter what the base is? Nope, just going to be one. So of these six values that I need to find here, I can plug in four of them automatically. It's always going to be negative one, zero, and one. This is always going to be one. This is going to be whatever the base is, and in this case, what's the base? One half. This is always going to be the reciprocal of the base. What's the reciprocal of the base? Reciprocal of one half is two. So this point is negative one, two. This point is zero, one. And this point right here is one comma one half. So I've got those labeled. Again, the base is a positive number, so it's never going to equal zero. So I do have a horizontal asymptote out on this end. It's y equals zero. Okay, are there any questions? Sure? Okay. So um, this is stuff right out of 1010, just a quick reminder. You should be able to fill this out. If you've got an exponential function, so we're going to call it y equals a of x. Oh, one thing we didn't do on this one is it said name the function. This is exponential base what? Base 2. What's this one? Exponential base 1 half. That would be the name of those functions. Okay? So, uh, now we're ready to deal with this. If the base is a... This would go through negative 1, 1 over a, 0, 1. No choice about that. It doesn't matter as long as it's a proper exponential. It's always going to go through 0, 1. And this would be 1, comma, a. Its name is, what we call it is, exponential base a. The base has got to be a positive number other than 1 like we talked about. Okay, exponential. Do you remember these words right here? If it's going up from left to right, we call that, we call that growth. So it's called exponential growth if the base is greater than 1. If it's a number in between 0 and 1 like we have right here, then we call it decay. Okay. So exponential growth and exponential decay. The domain, the numbers that we can plug in, you can plug in anything you want. As far as what you get out, though, that's a little bit different. What do we get out? What's the range? Zero, zero to infinity. Okay, question? Um, so it's not the same on both sides. So if we were to say this properly, we've got a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero on the left side. No asymptote over here. It just continues to grow. We say it increases without bound. And over on this side, we've got a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 on the right side. Okay, And on this side, it continues to increase. Or if you looked at it overall, it just decreases until it gets closer and closer and closer to 0, but never equals 0. Good? Okay. Anything else? So what's the horizontal asymptote again? Okay, It's going to be y equals 0. Now, again, that's assuming we've just got kind of a parent graph of an exponential function. We haven't moved it left, right, up, down, or anything like that. Okay? So let's take a look at these two examples, and let's see if we can do these really quickly without using an XY table. This is exponential base 4. We haven't slid it right, left, up, down, or anything weird like that. So what point is it always going to go through? 0, 1. If I plug in a 1, what do I get? I get a 4. So it's up here. If I plug in a negative 1, 1 fourth. So it looks like this. Here's my graph. It's exponential growth, just like we'd expect. We've got y equals 0. Again, that's called exponential base 4, and we could label each one of those points. And that would be pretty darn convincing to somebody that we know exactly what we're doing. Any questions there? Okay, what are we expecting out of this one right here? We're expecting it to go down. We're expecting this to be decay, right? So if I plug in a 0, I get a 1. If I plug in a 1, I get 1 third. If I plug in a negative 1, the negative means, what word does it mean? Reciprocal. So it's the reciprocal of the base, and the reciprocal of 1 third is 3. So we're right here. Negative 1, 3, 0, 1, 1, 1 third. Here's our function. We've got exponential decay. Boy, that's ugly. Okay. Exponential decay, just like we expect. Okay, are there any questions there? Okay, good review from 1010.
Excellent. That took 20 minutes. Now we've got plenty of time to talk about. Now, you did some of these things in Math 1010. Okay? These are slightly more complicated because remember, those rules that you learned that work with parabolas, stretch it, shrink it, shift it left, right, up, down, vertically flip it, horizontally flip it, all that sort of stuff, that still works with an exponential function. So if you learned those transformation rules really well with... Um, We've done uh, like those parent functions, square root functions, parabolas, all that sort of stuff. Then we should, get, should be in good shape right here. So it says, use what you know about transformations and the exponential functions. Without an XY table, uh, we want to graph this, state the domain, the range, label the asymptotes, and a few points on the graph. Okay. Now, a few points is going to be fine. We don't need to knock ourselves out here. Tell me what this does, what the plus one does to that graph. All it does is move it up one, okay? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the old graph. Now, sometimes this is helpful, okay? I'm going to do this in red. The old one went through these points right here, and it looked like this. That's what exponential base 2 looks like. What do I need to do to get the correct answer on this one? Take the whole thing and move it up one. So I'm going to move that point up one, that point up one, and this point, remember, this was negative 1, 1 half, so it's going to be right here. Now, if you'll recall from 1010, especially if you were in my class, I said, do yourself a favor. Don't draw the shape of the graph until you've figured out where the asymptote is. Where's the old asymptote? Zero, right? Where's the new one? At 1. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw a horizontal asymptote like this. I'm going to write y equals, oops, y equals 1 is our horizontal asymptote. And then here's the shape. Shape's going to look something like this. We want to label a couple of points. Where is this point right here? That middle one? 0, 2. And this one right here? 1, 3. Now, how can we know whether or not we got this graph right? Yeah. If I think this point is on the graph, it should work when I plug it into the equation. Remember that rule? If it works in the equation, it's on the graph. If it's on the equation, it should be should work in the in the in the equation. So if I take this and I plug it in, plug in a one, two to the first is two, plus one is three. Did I get the right point? We did. Okay, can I slide this over? Let's take a look at the next one. This looks very similar. It's still exponential base 2, but can somebody tell me the difference between these two? What's, okay. okay, this is with the x, so it's going to change it in the x direction horizontally. And what do we know about horizontal changes? They do the opposite of what we'd think. So what way is this going to go? This is going to go to the left. So again, the original one looks like this, something like that. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over one unit to the left. So I'm going to move this point over here, this point over here, and that point over there. Now, if I'm sliding this over to the left, the x coordinates change. Anything with an x in it is going to change by one unit. Does that mean I change, change the horizontal asymptote? Why not? Changing the x. It's still going to be y equals 0. So that graph is going to look something like this. And all we have to do to get it right is just label a couple of points. So I'm going to label this one right here, negative 1, 1. And I want you to tell me what this point right here is, the one with a fraction in it. Negative 2. It is negative 2. 1 half. One half. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? Is that pretty easy? Yeah. Okay, good. How about this one? Okay, this is going to go left, 1, up, 3. Left, 1, and up, 3. Now, let's see if we can do this right without drawing the original parent graph. Okay, if I, this is exponential base 2. We know what the shape is. Okay, we know it's exponential growth. If I take this and I slide it to the left, 1 unit, is that going to change the horizontal asymptote? Nope. If I take it and slide it up three, is that going to change the horizontal asymptote? Yes. What's the new horizontal asymptote? Y equals three. So right here, I'm going to draw in Y equals three. There's our horizontal asymptote. 
and remember, we moved it. Okay, so I am going to just draw enough of this that we could get the general shape. I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it left one and up three. So left one, up one, two, three. I'm right there. This point right here, left one, up one, two, three. We're right there. And you can see where this next one goes. It would need to go right there, right? So here's the shape. There's a good graph, pretty convincing, would be really convincing if we could label some of these. Whoops, zero five, right? What's that one? Negative one four, okay? Now, it'd be cool if you could find the one with a fraction in it, that's totally okay. You should know what it is. It's not that hard to figure out. Again, how could we check to see that we did this right? Plug in a point. I'm gonna plug in a negative one. Watch what happens when I plug in a negative one. If I plug in a negative one, I get zero. Two to the zero is one. One plus three is four. We got it right. Okay, are there any questions there? Okay. Okay, I think that's a pretty good review. Now we throw some interesting ones in here. These are fractions. Graph that really quickly. Good. We're expecting exponential decay, right? Plug in a zero, I get a one. Plug in a negative one, you get an eight. Plug in a one, you get a one-eighth. Now, what do you notice about these really small fractions? Yeah, it's, it's really steep. It decreases really quickly. Goes like that. Still has a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Okay, and that point right there, negative 1, 8. This point would be 0, 1. And that point right there would be 1, 1, 8. Okay? This is one off the front side. Yeah. Uh, excellent question. Everybody watch, please, because this usually comes up. Okay, the question is this. Can I take this and distribute th that through and have this be, what would that be? Okay, would we do I the negative two. also? Or, yeah, it would be negative 2. Okay, so that would be negative 2 to the x. Is that okay? It would be really cool if it was. There are two things wrong with this. I'm hoping somebody knows at least one of them. Uh, order of operations has something to do with it. Okay, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, then exponents. So we wouldn't do multiplication before we take care of an exponent. So I'm thinking of actually, I guess there are a couple, three reasons why. Okay, can you have a negative base for an exponential? You can't, so that's not okay. And the other thing is that we've talked about several times and an easy thing to forget is, remember the exponent only applies to what it's over. It's only over the one half, it's not over the negative four, okay? So you couldn't put those together in one exponential expression. It would be cool if you could, okay? Okay, um, take a good look here. Here's your hint. If I had x squared and I multiplied that by negative four, what would that do? Okay, this is gonna be, it's gonna be a vertical change. It is going to be a stretch. That's what the 4 does, a vertical stretch. What does the negative do? Okay, it's a vertical stretch and a vertical flip. So think about what this graph looked like. This graph used to look like this. Right? We're going to take that graph and we're going to vertically flip it, flip it upside down, and then stretch it by a factor of 4. So see if you can... Figure out what it would be and label a couple points. Thailand, question? No. Kind of visually. Okay. Okay. So watch. If I take this point and flip it over, it's right here at negative one, right? That takes care of the flip. But I want to flip it and I want to stretch it by how far? So I'm not going to be at negative one, I'm going to be at negative four. So we're right here. Okay. This point right here, is everybody watching? This point right here is 2, negative 1, comma 2. It's 2 units above the y-axis. 
I'm going to flip it over so it's two units below. I'm not going to leave it there, though, am I? I'm going to make it four times taller than it used to be. Vertically stretch it by a factor of four. So where would that put me? That would put me at negative eight. And negative eight is, let's see, right here, right there. Okay. This point right here is one half unit above. Flip it over, that would be one half unit below. Now I need to stretch it by a factor of four. So four times a half is two. So we're right here. Now, if you take a good look at that, that kind of, kind of looks like a line. It's, it's pretty steep, but there's no way it could be. What's the distance between the two of these? Vertical distance. Just two, and what's the distance between the two of these? Four. See, see that doubling thing, if you think about it, or halving, because the base is one half? Okay, now, my question for you is, the old horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. What would happen if we flipped zero and vertically stretched zero? Still zero, right? So our horizontal asymptote on this one is still y equals zero. So it goes something like this, and we could label those points. We figured out that this one was 1, negative 2. We figured out that this one was 0, negative 4. And we figured out that one was uh, negative 1, negative 8, right? Again, how could you check to see if you got it right? Plug it in. I guarantee those will work. Okay, now, you have several problems like this on the assignment, where you have to take the parent graph of an exponential, stretch it, shrink it, vertically flip it, slide it left, right, up, down, all that sort of stuff, okay? So I want you to take a look at part F. Can somebody tell me what's not quite right about that? Hold on, hold on. Just raise your hand. Can you see what's not quite right? Got a couple people. Makia, what's wrong with this? It's not in the right order. Usually we write the function, and then we write the plus or minus stuff at the end. Okay, those vertical transformations, yeah. Uh, the, x is the x is negative, okay. Do we know how to deal with that? Okay, so let's talk about what happens here. This is negative 4 to the negative x, negative 4 to the negative x, plus 1. Uh, careful here. Let's figure out the easy part first. What does the 1 do? Okay, so this is going to be up 1. Okay, let's do that negative in front. What does that do? Okay, that's a vertical flip. Does anybody remember what putting a negative in front of the x does? Very good. I think I heard a couple people say it. That's a horizontal flip. So this is, again, where it's sometimes useful to think about what does the parent graph look like? What does exponential base 4 look like? Exponential base 4, we graphed it on the front side. Exponential base 4 looks like this. What would it look like if we vertically flipped it, then horizontally flipped it? So if I vertically flipped it, that would look like this. If I horizontally flipped it, so that means right for left, that would look like this. So I'm going to change the colors on this. This, listen carefully, this is the right shape. This red one right here, that's the right shape. Parent graph, vertical flip, and then a horizontal flip after that. So this is the correct shape. We're looking for something like this. What's the only thing left to do to this? Move it up one. Okay. So if I can think about, gosh, where would this point be and where would this point be, and I probably should have made this look a little bit better, where would that point be? If I know where those points are, all I have to do is take them and move them up one unit. So again, do ourselves a favor. What's the old asymptote on this one? Y equals zero. Where is it going to be once I move it up one? So Y equals one is going to be our horizontal asymptote. So here's the horizontal asymptote. I'm going to take this, move it up one, that would be right there. Take this, move it up one, that would be right there. Take this point and move it up one. So that's actually going to be, if I did it right, okay, so that, that point would have been right there if I move it up one. 
And here's what the graph looks like. Clearly, if we did this right, that point is 0, 0. Can you tell me what this one is since it doesn't have a fraction in it? Negative 1, negative 3. And this one right here? 1 and... It is, very good. 1 and 3 fourths. 1 comma 3 fourths. Okay. Any questions? Okay. If we did this right, let's just double check. If I plug in a zero, I better get out a zero. So let's actually plug it into the original one. This is going to be negative zero or just zero. Four to the zero? Four to the zero is one. One minus one is zero. You think we got it right? Absolutely. Okay. Now, here's what we have left to take a look at um, for this particular section. Exponential base E is, an, uh, is a very important function, very critical. We use it all the time in math, so we ought to know what it looks like. Uh, can anybody remind us of roughly what E is as a decimal? Zach? 2.71. Okay, it's about 2.71. Okay, so right around 2.7. Okay? So if I were going to graph this, now granted the base is, a, is this ugly, irrational number. It's a decimal that goes on forever and doesn't repeat, kind of like pi. Okay? But I can still graph it. The nice thing about this is, if I take this and slide it around, writing down the points is actually, if you think about it, a little bit easier. Because you don't have to do the arithmetic. So this would go through 0, 1. This would go through 1, 1.27. Or we're going to call it 1 comma e. Let's not mess with that inexactness of uh, writing down 2.7. This point's 0, 1. And this point right here would be 1 comma 1, excuse me, negative 1 comma 1 over e. So it's about 1 over 3. It's about a third. It's actually a tiny bit more than a third. Okay? But it's about a third for argument's sake. So that's what the graph looks like. Still has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. What's that? It's a little bigger than a third. Because it's, it's, it's in between. Got it. Okay. There's that whole reciprocal relationship thing. Okay. I want you to look at this graph. Here's the parent graph. Again, we already talked about one likes this. What's wrong with this? Okay. It's in the wrong order. Negative e to the x plus 1. What do I need to do to the parent graph to make this one? Flip it over, vertical flip, and move it up one. So I'm going to take the original graph and flip it over. So that's going to look something like this. That's a vertical flip. And then I'm going to move it up one unit. So what's my new horizontal asymptote? Whoops, y equal 1. Here's my horizontal asymptote. And it's going to go through, move that up one. Move that up one, move that up one, and here's my graph. Oops. Okay, that point's easy, zero, zero. Can you tell me what this one is? One comma. Very good. This value down here would have been negative E. Remember up here it was E? Down here it's negative E. So we do negative e plus 1. This value right here was negative 1 over e. So that's negative 1. Negative 1 over e, and then what did I do to it? Added 1 to it. So you might remember this from Math 1010. The nice thing about these is even though they're ugly numbers, when you move them around, you don't have to do the arithmetic. You can just leave it as negative 1 over e plus 1. What was it to begin with? And then just add 1, subtract 1, whatever it happens to be. Okay. E to the negative x minus 2. What does the minus 2 do? Down 2. And what does the minus do? Okay, that is a horizontal flip. So instead of looking like this, it looks like this. And then the final answer is going to be what I get when I take that graph and move it down 2. Where's my new asymptote? 
negative 2. Okay, so y equals negative 2, and the graph would look something like this. Okay? Now, I'm not going to take the time to label points on that. You get the idea, right? Okay. Um, I do, just for the heck of it, want to point this out. Um, uh, most of you are going to go on in math. Um, you'll see this definition at some point. Um, this is one of the definitions for the natural number E. What this means is, this is actually notation from calculus. This says the limit as n approaches infinity. Or in other words, when you plug in bigger and bigger and bigger numbers, this gets closer and closer to E. So grab your calculator for a quick second or just watch up here. If I were to take this expression, so let's take 1 plus 1 over. Now let's figure out a big number to plug in here. Let's plug in 1,000, okay? Let's raise that to the 1,000. Now, before I hit enter, stop and think about this. The bigger number I plug in, the smaller this gets. So this gets really close to 1. So usually if I take 1 and raise it to a power, I still get 1, right? Okay? So in some case, you'd think it was equal to 1. Okay? If I take a number that's bigger than 1 and I raise it to a power that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger it should get bigger and bigger and bigger. So here's the interesting thing. It kind of settles down around 2.71. So I'm going to recall this, and I'm going to add a 0 here, and I'm going to insert a 0 here. So this is going to be plugging in a 10,000. Try 500. Okay, that is really close to E. No time. You can have all the fun you want, fascinate your friends, neighbors, parents with this nice nifty little trick. Okay? So um, that's just a definition. It's just something you might want to be aware of. Okay, let's take a look at these last seven problems. And we've got about seven minutes to solve. What? Okay. You might also want to be aware of this graph right here, exponential base 10, because it's the base of our number system. Would this be growth or decay? This would be pretty fast growth. Okay, this is going to grow really quickly. At zero, it's going to be one. What happens when you plug in a one? Ten. Two? One hundred. It's going to grow really quickly. Okay? Remember these from 1010? Yeah. Okay. These are easy type of exponential equations because you can write both sides using the same base. I'm not sure what the swoop is. Okay? But if both sides are written as the same base, the only way 2 to the x can be equal to 2 to the 3 is if x is equal to 3. You have some problems that are literally that simple. Most of them are not. Most of them fall into a category like this, where you have to rewrite at least one of the sides. So I can write both sides using a base of 2. 16 is 2 to the what? 2 to the 4th. And then we run into the same situation. If the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same. So the answer on this problem is four-fifths, and that's it. There's our answer, okay? Does that make sense? Now, do we ever have to worry about domain issues, and gosh, does that actually work when I plug it in? We don't because it doesn't have division, it doesn't have an even root, and it doesn't have a logarithm in it, okay? So the answers that you get will actually work. Let's take a look at this one and think for just a second. Can I write both sides using the same base, and if so, what is that base? Okay, so this is 5 to the x. This would be, this is like 1 over 5 squared. So this would be, if I move that to the top, 5 to the negative 2. So what's x got to be? Careful, just negative 2, right? Um, yeah, because that would mean the square root, not squaring. Okay, we'll deal with one of those in a second if you want. Okay, everybody good? Okay, let's take a look at number nine. Number nine's a little bit, or sorry, part D's a little bit different. I've got to write both sides using the same base. What base would I use? Three. three. So this is going to be careful here. Three to the second to the x squared equals three to the x. Now everybody watch, please. This is still a nine to the x squared. This is three to the x. So I haven't changed anything. I've just changed the way that it looks. My question for you is, for some reason, people get this mixed up. If I had x squared raised to the third, everybody knows what to do with those exponents. What do you do with them? Multiply. You times them, right? 
So what do you do with these? You multiply them. So this is 3 to the 2x squared equals 3 to the x. If the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. Set it equal to 0. Next. Factor it. X equals 0 and 1 half. And both of those will work. Okay? Those will both work. Questions? Okay, I've got three more, and they're kind of interesting problems. So let's take a good look at these. These are the slightly more difficult ones. You'll notice that what I've got here is 5 to the x, exponential base 5. That would be base 25 if I left it like that. And this is 125. What do you notice about all three of those? You can all write them with a base 5. So this is 5 to the x times 5 squared to the negative x, and this is 5 to the third. Okay, now, power to a power, what do I do with these? Multiply them together. So this is going to be 5 to the x times 5 to the negative 2x equals 5 to the third. Still with me? Again, if I came up here and I gave you a problem like this, x squared times x to the third, the bases are the same. What do I do with the exponents? I'd add them together. So guess what I do with these? I add them together. So x plus negative 2x, 5 to the negative x equals 5 to the third. So what's x? Negative 3. Does that make sense? Take a good look at that. Any questions? Okay, two more to go. Somebody tell me what's different about this one as opposed to most of the other ones. The bigger one equals the smaller one. The bigger one equals the smaller one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have, to change the, we have to change the base of both sides. So this is going to be... Oh, I see. The big number's over here. <laughs> I see what you're doing. Okay. I'm not crazy, I promise. Okay, that is different, but that's not the difference we're looking for, unfortunately. Okay? All right. So now they're both written with the same base. It's now the same type of problem we've dealt with several times. So power to a power, what do you do with these? 15x. Power to a power? So this is going to be 2 to the negative 2x. If the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same, right? So this is going to be 15x equals negative 2x. Now take a good look at this. Hmm. Yeah, I can put it all on one side. So that's going to be adding 2x. So that's 17x equals 0. What does this say the answer is? Is there anything wrong with that? No, there's, there's nothing. Okay, so you don't want like 0 apparently. <laughs> Okay, I, you're making it feel bad. Okay, so zero is a perfectly good answer. Last problem. Take a look at this one. Okay, for some reason people look at this and they freak out, even though this is one of the nicer ones, at least as far as the way it's set up, because the bases are all the same. When I multiply these together, what do I do with their exponents? I add them. So this is going to be e to the, I'm going to write it as x squared minus 5x, e to the negative 4. One quick move, they're both written with the same base, so that means the exponents have to be equal to each other. And now I'm to a point where, okay, this isn't the funnest thing in the world, but do you know how to solve that? Yes. It's a quadratic. We're going to move this to the same side. And I'm looking for numbers that multiply to be negative, excuse me, multiply to be 4 and combine to be po uh, negative 5. So that's going to be negative 4 and negative 1. Answers are 4 and 1. Any questions? Okay. Please make sure you're, I mean, get done with as much as you can because tomorrow we're going to cover 6-4, introduce a new topic. 
Your goal should be that when you leave on Friday, you've got all your questions answered, you've got your homework done so you can have a good weekend, and all you need to do is study a little bit for the quiz on Monday. Okay? All right. Have a